Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Online Instructor Bootcamp. Uh, we are so excited to have you with us today. Um, as you can see from everyone introducing themselves in the chat, we are from up and down our beautiful state of California, and uh, we really are in this together. And we are here today to kind of kick off uh, what we believe will be the beginning of a great journey together and really kind of going deeper into great training and kind of getting a, a better handle on some of the technical things, but really focusing as we go through these days on what is great training and how do we deliver that. And so um, we expect uh, to really kind of see your growth and also we always grow through this as we, um, we, we learn together in this process. So uh, what I'd like to do now is um, just introduce uh, Ray and Claire uh, to you. So I'm gonna, you'll see me turning to the side a little bit to um, share their bio with you. So Rayanne Ionello uh, has been uh, presenting workshops uh, for many, many years. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to tell you how many years, but uh, she is highly experienced, holds a master's degree in communication, two teaching credentials, a certificate in human resource management, a master trainer certificate from NUMI, which is a Toyota affiliate. Um, she's also worked as a director of business uh, development. Um, so she sits in the shoes of some of the directors on this call, uh, including me, uh, human resource management, corporate trainer and college professor. So Claire and I, um, just so you know, we have no idea how um, Ray does everything she does, and she teaches yoga and everything else. Um, so Claire <laughs> Laughlin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she does everything. So Claire Laughlin, um, as you'll see, is a really dynamic uh, trainer and consultant who really incorporates a lot of experiential and innovative methods to help teams and organizations achieve results. Um, with every client, she really seeks to kind of build that leadership potential uh, teach positive communication habits, enhance mm -hmm. trust. Um, and you'll see that's a theme if you follow her on LinkedIn. She does great videos on enhancing trust. Um, she also has over 20 years of experience in the business, has a background in management, a relentless dedication to transformation, which I've personally witnessed, and a passion for improving relationships in all of her work. So I'm, I'm joined by some incredible uh, training colleagues uh, this morning. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, uh, Ray. Good morning, and Jonathan Bissell just introduced us, but he is the best boss ever that I've ever worked for. He is the executive director of CCCE Corporate Training Solutions with San Mateo Community College District. He has expertise in designing and delivering training programs for the United States and international private and public sector organizations. He is also a certified contract trainer, executive coach, and milestone coach with the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center's Milestone Maker Startup Founder Acceleration Program. In 2020, he received the Star Performer Award for Leadership by the California Community College's Contract Education Technical Assistance Provider, CETAP, for exceptional contributions to the field of workplace education and training, and we are just thrilled to all be working together with you. Welcome. All right. You'll learn about MIT, the most important takeaway. When you deliver a training, what do you really want people to take away today? We want you to be inspired to move boldly into online training by using basic tools and concepts that leverage your existing talent. And we are really pleased that we can have such a large group of talented individuals to share today. That is part of the wonderful training you'll experience. All right, we want to give you a roadmap to let you know where we're going. We have two hours. Hopefully in the pre-work, those of you who are going to be presenting already have picked a topic of your expertise. Today we'll learn about tools of engagement. Tomorrow, big day, designing for real change. This is where your topic really comes in. You'll prepare and practice with your team. You'll be placed into teams with like-minded people. Day three, you'll be presenting your plans. 
Day four, we'll capture lessons learned and we'll create and build a very hopefully profitable strategic training business. Two additional days that you might think about attending, building your strategy and marketing and communicating with your audience, although these are more uh, tuned in for directors or people who create contracts, many of the contract education providers say they learned a great deal about how they can position themselves and gain more business with this strategy. Yeah, I really want to encourage you all to come to those sessions if you possibly can. We built them for all of you. And just to note that those two sessions um, come kind of in the middle of our four-day trainer um, series. So don't be confused as you look at uh, those sessions because those are different than the four days prepared directly for trainers. Okay. All right, I'm turning it over to Claire. Okay, so our objectives for today, my friends, this is what we're gonna work on. By the end of today's session, you're gonna, you're gonna think about two ways to approach training online. <laughs> We want to make sure that you can do can jump right into this online world with tools that you have available to you. So, you know, are very easy to use tools. So we're going to talk about two ways to approach training online. And we're going to talk about simple Zoom features that are going to enhance engagement. Again, you're going to use what you've got. We'll also talk about how you can assess the quality of your presentations using a simple evaluation form and of course, how to succeed in this course and achieve certification if that is what you are after. I hope you got a chance to watch my short Loom video. I sent you a six minute Loom video about the capstone presentation that we'll be doing. We are going to talk about that again at the end of today. So please stay tuned for that. And we'll just talk about what the requirements are and we'll get you into groups, et cetera. But that will happen at the end of our class today. Okay. So here's our meeting guidelines. Jonathan, you wanna go over these? Sure, uh, just a couple obvious things. Keep your camera on. We really wanna engage. Uh, there's 25 of us right now on this call. Mm -hmm. Wanna be able to see all your faces uh, throughout. Um, just minimize any distractions, uh, cell phones, things like that. Um, if you could stay on mute unless you have something specific, um, you can always use the chat. We're monitoring that. And uh, the biggest thing is we'd love you to participate. Uh, this is a kind of a group exercise here. Um, and then uh, we'll be sharing in the chat some different tools, um, some links. Um, and you'll see in the, in the chat, I've also put in a note that all of this will be made available um, on the CETAP website, um, probably about a week or two after completion of all the modules. Very good. Okay, everybody, let's get into this. If you have just joined us, one thing I'm asking everyone to do is as you join in, go on over to the chat, please introduce yourself, your name, your college, your role. And we're also asking a little bit about uh, where your college is located in the state. Some people wanna know that because we're not all familiar with all the colleges. So if you're just joining us, come on over and do that. But we are gonna jump right in and get to know each other, okay? We wanna connect before content. You'll hear us say this a lot. We wanna connect before we dive deep into the content and get you in, in the room, so to speak. So we want you right now to go ahead and take 30 seconds to grab an object that represents who you are. Don't show us yet, but just grab an object and we are gonna go into a breakout room in just a few minutes, okay? Okay. All right, if you've got your, grab an object that's nearby, anything that you, feel is in your sphere here that represents who you are. You're going to show this off to a small group. We're going to go into a breakout room, which is one of our tools of engagement that we love to use. So we're going to put you in a breakout room with three to four people. Um, give me a thumbs up if you've been in a Zoom breakout room already sometime since <laughs> this whole thing started. Okay, most of you have. That's great. I love seeing that. Um, if you've not been in a breakout room yet, I'm just going to give you the high level overview. Basically, you're going to click a button and you're going to go into a small group that's just three or four people on the screen. 
If you can turn your camera on, great. If you can't, then make sure you unmute yourself. Um, the mute and the camera buttons are usually found in Zoom by hovering your cursor over the top or the bottom of the screen, usually the bottom if you're not presenting. So you can click the mute on and off and the camera on and off down there. So go into your breakout room. I want you to introduce yourself, your name, your college, how long you've been teaching, show your object and share why it represents you, okay? Okay, everyone, nice to see you back. Very good. I cannot believe the amount of resources and the people I'm meeting, you guys. Thank you so much. I didn't realize that these people aren't just in the community college. They're also in the private sector. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of genius in this group, I'll tell you that. You know, we're so lucky in this environment to have, again, such, really such a, a wide range of experience. Yeah. And part of our job, Jonathan, Ray, Ann and I, our job is to create community so that you learn from each other. And there's, uh, you know, it's not, you'll see this, right? And this is an important part of teaching in this way is that it's not about this sort of one-way transmission. It's really about creating community and connection and learning just like we would in a classroom to the to the best degree that we can, just like we would in a classroom. Uh, give, give me a thumbs up if you met some cool people in your breakout room. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> All right, very good. So that was a way for us to connect before content, to create community with you all and, and start warming up everyone into uh, our learning for today. So thank you so much for participating. We're gonna jump right in here to some of our content. Let's talk about online learning. This is a really important uh, transition that we're trying to make. And behind the scenes in online training, this world is growing dramatically. So in 2019 only, the size of the market was $187 billion. That's the market for online training, it's huge. Um, but the estimated value of global online education by 2025 is 319 billion. I mean, there's actually different figures depending on what you're looking at, but it's growing ginormous. Okay. And that means that the growth rate for online education is almost 10%. And, and I don't know how this even might be, actually, this may have even been updated in the last month or two. This was, these were April statistics. But now that so many businesses are actually talking about um, not going back to in-person work and to re uh, really staying with this flexible work from home thing, I'm thinking that the online training world may be even bigger than this. So the thing is, is that there's this amazing opportunity here. And we know that some of you are directors of programs, some of you are trainers, some of you are both, some of you are many things beyond that, even at your colleges. Um, and we've created this course so that we can help you take advantage of that market. Your customers, will come to you for this online learning because you have an audience already. Many of you already have an audience. If you don't, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to grow that audience. But your audience, even though there's a lot of opportunity out there, they'll come to you because they know, like, and trust you. And just so you know, they want someone who knows the business. They want the convenience and speed of coming to someone that has expertise. And they want their, their you know, content curated and customized okay so what we're really talking about in this course is oftentimes we'll be talking about the business community okay we'll be talking about how you position yourself through contract education which serves businesses most often now many of you may be maybe community education trainers in which case actually I almost can't think of anything that we're gonna teach in this course that won't apply to you. I think everything pretty much will apply to you as well because the principles that we're talking about are about how to design and deliver engaging online training. Okay, so 
that's what this is all about. Now, if you're a director, you also need to know this, of course, because it's your product that you're putting out into the world. So we hope to work with all of you through this whole series to help you take advantage of this really exceptionally large and growing market, all right? So I wanna know now about what your why is. We're gonna put you back in those breakout rooms that you were in before. We're gonna give you six minutes this time. And this time I want you to talk about what you will gain from building your strategic online business. Now I'm gonna use the word strategic because we don't want you to just necessarily start translating every single thing you ever did from live to online. You know, we want you to think strategically about where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. So I want you to think about what you're going to gain from building this strategic online business and what you have to offer others. What are your special strengths? Okay. So let's head on back to our breakout rooms. All right, everybody. So as you come on back, if you are here, I want you to put some of your special strengths in the chat for us, if you would. Very good, very good. All right. I have two monitors, so I keep kind of looking back and forth between the two, trying to get <laughs> a little spaciousness there. All right, so put your special strengths into the chat. Tell us about what you are looking forward to and what you have to offer. Love to hear a little bit of that. All right, welcome back, welcome back. So let's just take a moment as you populate the chat. Give us a little bit there in chat. Tell us, because I, 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 the one thing I got to say I really miss out on in not being live is not, not really having quite as much opportunity to float around between groups and, you know, get my ear involved in, in what everybody is doing. Now, of course, you know, you can actually do that in breakout rooms. You can zoom in and and eavesdrop for a few minutes, but you know, it's not quite the same as getting that vibe of everyone chatting in the same room. So let's see what we've got here in chat. Love to see this stuff. Okay. All right. All right, Carrie says, looking forward to helping spread the message of safety even further. That's great. Okay, oops, hard to see the text. Oh, I'm sorry. Text is broken up. Okay, good to know. Good to know. We'll take a look at that. It's it's clear now. It is okay. Oh, good. it's just delayed. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Uh, Jock, Jock. Thank you. Connecting with more learners more easily. Okay. Very good. It does give you some scope and some scalability. That's for sure. Oh, Mina enjoys training and offers intercultural and international experience. Okay, that's great. Soft skills and supply chain. Suzanne, looking forward to outreach, um, outreach expanding, okay? Online training is the future. Robin says, my strength is love of training. I love this, you guys. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Working with volunteer organizations, I love all this. Okay, good. So I do encourage you to keep your eye over there on the chat. We want you to get to know each other and each other's strengths. This is really fantastic um being able to turn toward each other and get a little advice here and there and we will be sending we'll be um telling you a little bit about a community that we have started where you can come in and we can work together beyond our class here um and share training tips and trip tricks okay great oh marlene you says being able to work in the winter time hmm, tell me about that who's marlene Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I live in a four season environment. I live at 7,000 feet. So in the wintertime, I, I don't drive down the mountain. Okay. And so I don't, I don't accept work. Okay, there you go. Well, now you can. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Thanks, Marlene. Very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks. So thank you so much for sharing. I, again, there's a lot of us here in the room. I can't wait to dig in and really get to know each other even better. But let's launch here into two ways to play, okay? So we, again, with limited time, our job as 
instructors is always to curate the content, to, to think about out of everything we could teach, what should we teach in the time that we have? All right, we're gonna go into that even in more detail tomorrow. But in general, we're gonna simplify here and say, in the online world, we're gonna talk about two ways to, to play, all right? And many of us jumped right in as soon as COVID hit to virtual instructor-led training, meaning that we just tried to do the same class that we had planned, but do it live, okay, and, and online. And that's fine. If that's, if that's a workable model, that's great. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It's just like what we're doing here because we get, there's so much connection and ability to get to know each other, and that's lovely. But there's another way and that's asynchronous or pre-recorded training, okay? And so Desiree, you and I just had a little chat about this. Um, this is a great opportunity. Well, not about this specifically, but you might, <laughs> if you're not already doing this, like, you, know, you know you should, yes. <laughs> so the idea is when you have a lot of demand for a topic or for your time, you might wanna consider putting some of your uh, genius on video and selling it that way, a pre-recorded package training, which you can enhance in many, many ways so that you keep the connection strong, you keep completion strong, you create community with people, but you do all this while you're, it's, it's like the flipped classroom model where people go and they learn something from the video. And then if you design it right, then they come back and they do some live interaction with you or one of your coaches, for example so that they can uh, learn you know, together as well, but also get that video recording. So that, that video option sort of immediately makes you much more scalable, okay? So there's two things that we're just gonna kind of play with and bring into our uh, class, and that's these two ways to play. Now, down here, there's a little, there's just a few tools that we want to recommend, okay? Now, you, we want to make this very manageable for you. I know a lot of people don't have budgets. We're not saying you have to have these things. But when you start working online, tools of the trade include something that helps you get good sound quality. You really have to have good sound quality. It's very important. Um, if you are a person who's having issues with your sound, you've got to fix that right away because now we have fewer channels. You, you can't just project your voice. So make sure that you consider sound quality. This uh, picture here of the microphone is something that Jonathan uses. And we can provide you with um, what some of these price ranges are, et cetera. I think I looked this up, Jonathan, if this is correct. Yeah, he's showing us on the screen there. I think that one's about a hundred bucks. Is that what you said before? Uh, this one was around 50. Oh, okay, great. Um, it also depends on if you have Amazon Prime, things like that, but yeah. it's great because it's a, uh, you can set it to different settings um, great. and it just sits on my desk like a little tripod. Yeah. So you want to think about sound because if we can't hear each other, we can't get engagement. Okay. <laughs> um, lighting is really important. Your lighting in your background, when you're doing your virtual training, you've got to have some front light. Okay. I use a ring light. There's a picture of it here. Those things are pretty inexpensive. They, they range anywhere from about $30 to $100. Mine was about 40 something. It's, it's very convenient, really lightweight, easy to take around with me. I also have a lighting kit. There's a picture of it there. My lighting kit was only, was only $50. Um, and it was these sort of these soft box lights. And I do that. I use that when I'm video recording and that makes a huge difference. So definitely consider your lighting. And finally, if you're going to do pre-recorded, I waited too long before I invested the $260 in a teleprompter. I'm telling you that thing saves my life. I love that teleprompter. If you're going to move into that realm of doing that pre-recorded training, I definitely encourage you to consider a teleprompter because you will save so much money. Once you get used to it, you'll save a lot of money on editing rework, et cetera. So that $260 is a great investment. So again, our job here today is not to tell you go out and buy stuff. It's not that. It's just that if you're really going to jump into this online world and we need to be engaging, we wanted to, to just talk for a minute about some of the tools that are important to use. Okay. So those are just, just some basics. 
All right. So in addition to this, right, no matter what you use or no matter which way you play, you need to be engaging. So we're going to now move into some more tools um, and, and think about your engagement go-to guide. When we talk about engaging online courses, we want you to remember that you want to use tools to support engagement, not just because they're there, okay? So for example, video clips. Some people want to bring video clips into their presentations. If that supports your content and it supports engagement, then go for it. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't enhance what you are there to do in the time allotted, leave it out, okay? So you want to be thinking about only using tools that will support engagement, but to always be thinking about how to get more engagement, okay? So chat, reactions, um, polls, breakout rooms, these are all things that are, that are right at your fingertips and can be very useful but they need to support what you're trying to accomplish. So what have we used here so far, right? We've used the breakout rooms, we've used chat, we've, we've used some visuals, we've put some pictures in there. We haven't really told stories yet, but I'll tell you a few shortly. Um, we're using question prompts. Um, we will show you some links. We've got everybody in gallery view, at least I do, so I can see everyone's faces, which I love, and we are about to launch a poll in just a few minutes. So those are just some basics that we're gonna talk about here today. There's of course a lot of other things. You can use file share, whiteboard, you can annotate files. You also wanna consider as a way of engaging people, building community and connections between the people who are on your calls and on your classes with you. Oops. So remember everything you do when it comes to engagement needs to be in support of your big, well, Rayanne introduced it earlier, your most important takeaway or your MIT for the, for the day. Now, just so you know, we're gonna go into what that MIT is tomorrow in our class tomorrow. So we'll go deeper into that tomorrow. So use those tools to support engagement. So I wanna step back now and think, what does create an engaging online experience? What creates that? And just again, to, to boil it down, we think three important things, compelling content. Now that little box there is in blue because that is something we're gonna talk about tomorrow. But today we're gonna to talk about other things that create an engaging online experience, including interaction between me and you and between you and each other, creating that sense of community and creating a feeling of progress that you are moving through something. You've started and now you're going to continue and that feeling of progress is something that actually keeps us moving when it comes to online experiences, all right? Okay, so we are gonna go over some basic technical tools. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna focus on interaction and we're gonna look at what you have at your fingertips, which is the Zoom toolbar, okay? So most of you have access to Zoom through the community colleges. Not everyone apparently, but most people do. So again, with the time that we have, we thought, okay, we're gonna work on something that's very accessible, very easy. Of course, some people are using other tools like Microsoft Teams, or they're using GoToMeeting or something like that. So the same kind of tools exist in different platforms for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, we're gonna go over Zoom because that's something that most people have available to them, okay? So what I'm gonna start with next, what I'm gonna to go to next here is I'm gonna launch a poll because I wanna see what Zoom tools you are already using. So let's bring that forward. I'm launching that poll. And so you should have that on your screen. I wanna think about which of these Zoom tools you're already using in your online courses. Do you use reactions, the reaction bar, the thumbs up, the breakout rooms? Are you recording your Zooms? Are you using chat? share screen, polls, co-hosting. We're gonna go through all of these, but go ahead and take a moment and cast your vote. This is multiple choice. You can actually select all the ones that you are using. I wanna see what's most popular here in our group. Where are we now? Okay, the scores are going up. I love it. I'm gonna give you just another minute or so. Okay, everybody good? All right, let's end the poll. I'm gonna close this out and I will show you. Oh, wow. Yeah, you guys are using a lot of these things, which I really like. So I'm sharing the results now. 
And I see that chat and share screen are very well used. 19 out of the 22 of you who responded are using both of those. But other high points, you know, the gallery view, the video view is very high. That's great. Reactions. Some people are using breakout rooms. So we're going to go through some of these things so that you can uh, get a sense for why these different things can be engaging and how to use them a little bit better. Okay. And I'll just share really quickly that um, we're going to go through them a little bit, but what we really encourage you to do is um, get into groups on your own outside of this and practice them. There's no substitute for just messing around with the tools and making mistakes and practicing on each other yeah. um, or on family members if they're willing. <laughs> Um, but really that practice time will help you kind of work out some of the kinks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, very good. So let's go through some of the basic technical tools. We're going to talk about reactions, breakout rooms, recording function, chat, share screen, polls, co-hosting, and the video view, the gallery view that we've got going here. Let's go just through these one by one. We're going to try to make this fairly quick because um, I know that the, these are all available to you. And honestly, Zoom is your best tutor. And there's lots of tutorials in Zoom. But I want to talk about when to use it. The reaction bar, we've used it a couple times. Give me a thumbs up if you've used the reaction bar before. Anybody? Okay, very good. See, so I have to look over to the side. Yes, I see the actual thumbs. Very good. If you've got your gallery view open, people can either click the button or not. Of course, you know that. But it's to gauge an immediate understanding, for example. But just watch out and make sure that you ask a close ended, like a thumbs up, thumbs down question so that you can, so it makes it easy for the learner. Okay, we all know that. It's really important. But it's a, it's a fun way to get people to know that you see them and you hear them and, and you're there. Okay. Now, did I just see a hand raise? Where do I have a hand raise? What's that? I was just, I'm sorry, I was clicking, playing Never around. Sorry. <laughs> I, I do have a question though. I, is it normal, like I've used these before, but when I clicked my hand, I see it in the participant list, but I don't see it on my gallery view. Like is my hand raised on my, on my picture? It um, is. is it? It is, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so is it normal for me not to see it? Because I don't see it raised. It's a good question. Next, in the participant uh, list. Yes, it's in the participant list, but it's not on my picture, like my video. You, you know, if somebody else, I see other people's hands raised or their thumbs up, but I don't see mine. Yeah. Interesting. Is that you normal? Know, I haven't looked into that particular feature, uh, but uh, in terms of whether it should show up for you, but it shows up for everyone else. Okay. As long as you know that you're raising your hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you see, it. you see that green check mark now? I don't see a green check mark. Oh, I see it in the participant list, but I don't see it on your picture. Okay. But you see my hand raised on my picture. I do. Yeah. Okay. That's weird. I don't see it on mine, but okay. Thank yeah. you. No worries. Yeah. It might be in your, um, you might go back into zoom into the background settings and see uh -huh. if there's a setting there for that. Yeah. Perfect. And Thank you. So you all know, and then I want to give Claire room to run with this because um, just for sake of time, there, if you enable new things in your settings, they typically don't take effect until you close out and start a new session. Yeah. So if you're looking for those immediate changes, you won't see them right away. Right. That can be frustrating. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we're just going to go through some of these now. Um, let's see. Reactions. Okay. Breakout rooms, we just use those. That's right there on your, on your bar at the bottom, of course. So you just wanna set up your breakout rooms. Remember there's a setup feature where you can change the size of the group, et cetera. But use that for small conversations, of course, to get people connected. Make sure you practice creating the rooms, set the time and determine the number of people. The room composition can be set up in advance. Manual obviously takes longer and I want, I just, I feel like the manual thing, let me just say that if you're use, working with a co-instructor, that's so much easier because one person can be teaching while the other person is tweaking the breakout rooms. <laughs> it's, it, it really helps to have a co-host. A co so we'll talk about that in a minute. When you go into those small group conversations, make sure that your instructions or outcomes are clear 
I often encourage people to take a photo of the screen or go ahead and put it in the chat and then also put it in the broadcast in the breakout room. And you can use that broadcast to send messages. And of course you can also drop in, but I, also, but I always say, if you're gonna drop in on those groups, tell people that you're gonna drop in in advance so that you don't just show up. And then people are like, well, that's weird, floating head. You know, So try to um, give people a little bit of warning that that's how you'll be using the breakout room feature. Okay, let's talk about the record feature. You might not think about this as an engagement tool, but honestly, it can be fantastic because use it if you want to record for your own purpose, like to, to learn from what you just did. And you can send the recording to others. And that actually can be something that is like a sales tool. You can say to your, to your client, you know, not only will I teach this class live, but I will give you access to the recording for 30 days. And then you can just maybe turn the price up a little bit. So you can actually use this to your advantage as part of your product offering. Watch out, you are recording, <laughs> don't forget. And you, you may have to go in and do some editing, so be careful about that. If you pause, you need to restart. I have failed to do that on at least one occasion. I gave this webinar, I gave it two times. The first time was okay, the second time was fantastic. But the second time I stopped the recording when somebody went to a breakout room and I forgot to restart it and boy, did that cause me a heartache. <laughs> so if you're a college employee and you have the Zoom access, cloud storage is also available, which is really convenient because sharing the link in cloud storage is super easy. And of course, storage on your own device takes up space and it sucks up space quickly with all that video, just so you know. Blair, question? Yes. Have you ever encountered legal issues with recording? Um, I, so we use the function that says this meeting is being recorded on, on purpose and we tell people it's recorded. So far, I have not encountered any legal issues as long as I'm doing those things. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I am going to say that I've been in a teaching blog because I also teach at the college and this is an issue of privacy for students and you need to make that very, very clear that, you know, when, whenever you give them beforehand so that they say, well, I didn't understand that. So anyway, it is becoming a legal issue. So I would say be very careful and make sure you say it more than once, especially yes. if you're in a, in a college cl classroom for credit. And as I, yeah, That's I true. always just think of those sensitive things. And if somebody, you know, people need to be reminded that they're being recorded sometimes. Well, one other quick thing is sometimes kids are running around in the background that are under 18. So mm, very good. Very good to remember. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So again, be very careful with that. And, and so these are the things that you need to think about when you're, when you're doing this and you're selling your product, especially, right? So, so just be very, very cautious about all that. Okay, the chat, of course, can really be used to increase engagement because you can just get people into doing things. And you know this, every time you have your hands on that keyboard or you're putting in your information, it's a form of engagement. Um, now, I guess the downside is, and I felt this, I've been in these, these classes even today with, with the 23 of us, you can't always read every single response to chat. And I fear that, I mean, I don't like to leave anybody out, but you kind of have to be high level with it. You have to kind of bounce around a little bit and say this and this and this, you know, and just try to be conscious of including as many as you can without literally just reading the whole chat roll. So that's something to practice a little bit. You can use chat to take role. There's also uh, apparently a, a reporting function that can help you. So if you're selling a product to an audience, uh, Rayanne was just telling me the other day about, you know, she needed to take role because this was something that was counting. This is a sexual harassment class, right, Rayanne? It was counting for people had to put in their hours. Yes. Yeah. So, so in some cases, and I've sold um, open enrollment courses where the, the client, the employer wants to know who from my organization showed up. So I need to have people put something in the chat. We actually can, ran a training um, Saturday and Sunday this past weekend and people were getting paid to participate. And so that was also very important. And you did whatever, right. whatever you choose, you just have to make sure that you're gonna be able to work that, that system. Um, so don't worry too much about one particular thing, but just 
pick something that will work for you and make sure that um, you test it out ahead of time. Yeah. And just sort of think through like how, how will I be using this and what are the implications or the ramifications of using this uh, different tool? Okay. So the watch out here is that it's hard to watch the chat. Again, this is a great reason to have co-hosts because Jonathan and Rianne can be watching the chat while I'm teaching. You know, um, there's also this public and private option. So sometimes you mean to send a message in private, but you're actually sending it to everyone. <laughs> or you thought everyone was getting it, but it's actually just, it's just to one person. So just be aware of that. And you might, in some cases, need some rules for chat, depending on your audience. You may have people participating in chat in such a way that you need some ground rules, you know, about what people should, how the quality of their participation. So that's really something to consider. And I always encourage you, if you think you might have a problem with that, try to set it up in advance. Now, the thing is with chat, whenever you join chat, you're only going to be able to see the chat from that point forward. So we have to be conscious of this as presenters that just because we put something in the chat when everyone was signing on doesn't mean that everyone can see it. So you may have to list it in there multiple times. Okay. Okay. Share screen. Of course, we know this. We're going to share a slide deck this way or to share a document. Or sometimes you can go outside of Zoom and use games or apps or show a video. Um, you can also ask participants to share their screen. Of course, that's super helpful for running meetings and other things. But just remember, you've got to see that green bar around the screen that you want to share. And you, you've got to stop share and start share if you're going to switch documents. So these are things that you just want to practice, 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 and be aware of what's on your screen, of course. Um, so if you're sharing your whole Google you know, screen, for example, just you might want to just pay attention to what's in the, in the bars up front and et cetera. So you've got to watch out for that. Okay. And yes, Jonathan, thank you. Jonathan, why don't you say out loud what you just typed in the chat just because it's, it's, it is really important. Yeah, so video, playing video in a training is really tricky. Um, even if you do it right, there's no guarantee it will turn out the same way. So when you go to share your screen, um, before you click share, at the bottom left of that, it, you'll see little check boxes to optimize the video. You wanna make sure those are clicked. And then you also wanna look at your sound volume before you play. I've been underwhelmed and overwhelmed with volume from other people playing videos. It's always tricky. So be sure to test it out with someone else before you actually do it in a live session. That's great, yes. And even if you test it, depending on other people's internet speeds, they may or may not be able to see it very well, just yep. so you know. Claire and Jonathan, I was just about to say that I've done video and I did a pre-recording session and then, a, um, as you suggested earlier, which works beautifully, and then we did live application. And I was sharing a video and I did all the wonderful tricks that Jonathan said to do, but they had, it was almost like they were watching a delayed reaction. And it became so bad that I eventually just ditched the videos because right. yeah. it was just so distracting for the yeah. participants. Absolutely. This is the old, uh, it goes back to all of our tips and tricks of always have backup plans. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's how we, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Polls. Polls are really important. I mean, they can be a lot of fun. You set them up in advance. Just know that you can't just click a poll. You can't just click that button real time and get a poll. You have to go back into the back end of Zoom and write it all up. And you'll see here that there's an option for single choice or multiple choice. You can add questions. So you can make your polls pretty complex, but um, just remember to go in and check it out. Okay. In Claire, opinion. Claire, I'm really curious um, with all the technology, yeah. why can why can we not do a poll in real time? I do not know the answer to that, but well, <laughs> I mean, you can do it in real. I mean, well, you just have to, well, just because it takes some thought, I guess, to write the question and to put all the answers in. I can't usually you can do it in real time. I think what Claire is saying is it's not a great idea. Um, to have people watch you fumbling around trying to set it up in the moment. Yeah. Um, so that's that's part of the idea. Is okay. If it's super simple with one quick question, you could, but again, it takes you to the back end. 
yeah. don't really want to be doing that. You could you could do it on a break. Yeah. Um, but again, you want to just prepare as much as possible. Okay. And there are there are other tools like Poll Anywhere, a uh, Poll Everywhere, or Poll Anywhere. There are other tools that you can use with a screen that are you know people can use their phones. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the polls, I I often use the anonymous, the little checkbox up there, especially because I teach something like sexual harassment, and I'll ask. You know, this is an, and I make sure this is an anonymous poll. How many of you have felt like you were a victim? And then how many of you have actually taken action? And it's very interesting when we start out that session, it gets people to go, whoa, maybe this is important. Even though I've heard it before, look at all the people. So thinking about how to strategically place your polls, what are, what are you trying to, uh, what kind of information are you trying to get out there and why is this important rather than just fun fun polls are nice too as as a way to engage at the beginning how many of you already have an online certificate or something like that but try to think about where to put them and have them done in advance it works much better that way thank you yeah cannot emphasize that enough you want to really be thinking about huh is a poll going to enhance my understanding of the audience or the audience's experience, or both. That's what you want to be thinking about. Not just like, oh, I think I haven't done a poll. I'm going to throw a poll in here, you know, but thinking about whether it's going to enhance the experience. And again, to use it to assess your audience, I love to start my classes. I used to do it when I was teaching live. I would do everything like I would get everybody to stand up and you know, use their bodies to make choices between options and stuff. And I think, well, now I've got a poll. Now I've got to do it that way, right? So to assess your audience or to narrow choices for people or to compare and contrast from start to end, for example. So again, just set it up in advance and make sure you check that single or multiple choice button. Don't overlook that because again, I've gotten stuck in that little web uh, once, uh, once or twice. So you want to make sure you get the right one, All right? Okay, co-hosting, let's talk about this. I, I point to the manage participants part of the bar there because that's where you're gonna, when you go into your participant panel, you can appoint a co-host. I love co-hosting. I'm typically kind of a, like I just sort of do it on my own type person, but since we've been in this online world, I've been hosting almost every one of my classes with a co-host and I love it. It's fun, it's creative, and it's super helpful because, for example, one time I was teaching and I was having internet connectivity issues, like out of the blue, something was going on, like Comcast was fixing my cable that day and didn't give us any warning. And I was teaching a class that was being recorded. And uh, luckily I had appointed a co-host because I got kicked off and then I had to come back on. Wait, was that our class, you guys? I think it might've been. <laughs> yeah, that was the first session and actually it hit all, like. I had the same trouble, but because there were three of us that day, yeah, um, I literally on the second day I got kicked off five times. Yeah, that's and awful. that's when I bought my hundred foot cable that stretches <laughs> all the way up my staircase right. to connect directly to our internet portal, our yeah. connection. Yeah. Um, but some days, even with all that, you just don't know. So, a co-host allows that person to be the host if yeah. you get dropped off. Yeah. Keep in mind that when you rejoin. Uh, a lot of times you lose, you personally don't see all the chat that came before, right. but your co-host still will. So right. it's, it's just, there's a couple of good practice kind of things with this. Yeah. Do you have a limit on how many co-hosts, you know? Yeah, that's a really good question. I've used, um, I've appointed three, up to three people as co-hosts in a single meeting with no problem, but I don't know if there's an upper limit. That's a great yeah. question. Anybody know that? I just I checked. I just checked Google, and it said there's no limit. Okay, great. <laughs> but you would want. I mean, but you would want to. You would want to select a co-host that understands what your program, right? Not just any participant. Yeah. Well, if I have a, I, I have gotten into one, and I've and I have assigned somebody right off, and just told them, look, I'm assigning you co-host, so that if anything happens, we still have the recording, at at a minimum. But ideally, you want to have a co-host that you work with or somebody who can do other jobs, like read the chat for you, you know, and set up your breakout rooms or make sure the polls are working and things like that. So co-hosts have most controls, but not all. Um, so just be beware. Like, for example, 
one, one of my co-hosts, I think it's a function of her Zoom version and my Zoom version or something, but when she's a co-host, she can't see the poll. Um, so I have to make her host to do the poll. And, you know, it's, it's kind of confusing that way. But again, play around with it. Like Jonathan said earlier, this is a great time to get your family involved and just set up a Zoom meeting and play with everything <laughs> or your group that we're going to set you up with so that you have, you just try all this different stuff. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So that's co-hosting. Okay, the gallery view. I love the gallery view. I, I mean, for me, and I'm, I apologize, I keep looking to the side because right now all your pictures are on one screen while, my, while I'm looking at my teaching screen. And um, ideally I'd have it all in one place. But I love that gallery view because to me, it really creates a sense of community. And when people can see each other at least a little bit, it just helps us get more of those channels for connecting with one another. And then again, what tools will you use? So we wanna talk, we're gonna go back into a very quick breakout. I'm gonna give you, let's see, I'm gonna give you seven minutes this time. We're going a little bit deeper. And I want you to try to think about the tools you have used or will use. Like out of those things that we talked about so far, what could you add to what you're doing, all right? So let me get my breakout rooms set up here. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, good to see you. As you return, why don't you head on over to the chat bar and tell us one tool that you are planning on adding to your repertoire, testing out, trying. Love to hear it. Hello, welcome back everybody. Okay, as you come on back, go on over to the chat and tell us what new tools you might be willing to try or practice. Okay, very good. Jack says more polls. Okay. And remember to, to go back on mute. Very good, Jonathan. Breakout rooms. Thank you, Robin. Wendy says recording responsibly. Very good. Is it legal to require participants to be on video? Mina, that's a very good question. I I would seriously doubt it, but um, maybe Rayanne, maybe, I don't know if you have anything to say about that or if you have any understanding of that. I, I, don't, I don't think we could, I don't think we can require them, but we can tell them that that's in their best interest. I would not want to have a, a, a legal, uh, a lawsuit because somebody, uh, maybe they have a, a, a deformity or a disability. So that would be something to prepare people for the session, we will ask you, because I know Cam, uh, Claire sent out an email. She said, cameras on, letting people know that your cameras will be on. So any way that you can communicate, I would say, but I will continue, I will do some more research on that. I would say yeah. probably not requiring them because yeah. that might be an accessibility issue. Yeah, I find most people are fairly um, willing if their technology is supportive of it. And usually I, I often tell people, hey, maybe just flip your camera on and say hello and then go ahead and turn it back off if you're not comfortable having it on. Um, you know, people have all kinds of reasons for not wanting it on. Maybe sometimes their background isn't good or they've got a lot of distractions in their environment or they just, you know, went for a run and, or, and they didn't <laughs> they don't feel like getting ready for a video call, which is fine. So I try to be very gentle with that and just encourage people to put their video on and not require it. But um, I find I find most people have been pretty supportive, with uh, with a few exceptions of. Um, teams one of the, were, yeah, go ahead. One of the um, things we talked about is virtual backgrounds. I was explaining to my group the reason I have my virtual background for two reasons. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was supposed to be on vacation this week, so I'm oh. trying to channel. <laughs> <laughs> I, where I'm supposed to be. But more importantly, since we've all been working from home, my family has invaded my office and it is not presentable. <laughs> and so yeah. if you're somewhere where it's not presentable or you're kicked out of your office, like I do sometimes, then I use my virtual background so that you can't see the chaos that's going on behind me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to have that. And I find that, that if you've got a green screen, your virtual background usually works a little bit better. 
Yeah. Um, we've had some funny, we've, I've seen some funny things where you have like this ghost effect. Yes. When you, <laughs> sometimes that even happens with a green screen, but so anyway. Yes, virtual background is a nice, uh, is a nice addition. Okay, very good. What are we seeing over here? What else is going on in the chat? Polls, very good. Um, and all good. I want you guys to be just trying to, to, again, consider always that question, what's going to enhance the user experience or my understanding of the audience? And then how can we do that to create a more engaging uh, experience for all? So thank you. And just remember that Zoom is a great tutor. Zoom is your best tutor. Go on in, in the Zoom video tutorials, there's all kinds of videos in there. You can also, of course, just go to YouTube and say, how do I do this on Zoom? You'll find so many interesting things. But if you go through your features in Zoom and you look at all the features, it, they're very well explained. And I think that's a really good thing to do and maybe more than once even. <laughs> So there you have it. We wanted you to have these easy to use tools. So let's do, we've been at it for almost an hour and a half here. I thought we would take a, about a two minute stretch break. So why don't we all stand up, shake it off, move around a little bit and stretch out your back. Look, look away from your screen for a minute and we'll just take about two minutes. All right, great to have you back. We do have ground to cover in this class, that's for sure. It's always like that though, isn't it? You all know that when, no matter how much time you have, <laughs> there's always this way that uh, you wanna make the most of it for sure, but not overdo it. Okay. <clears throat> so my friends, some of the things we talked about in terms of creating an engaging online experience is that we talked about how to encourage interaction We've touched on how to create community for people, for sure, a little bit. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And now we're gonna turn our attention to, just briefly, to how to help people feel like they're making progress. So progress is a really interesting thing when it comes to online training, because much of our, sometimes we have an online training that's just one day, for example. And so progress may or may not be the, the big driver there. But when you have an online course, especially if it's a recorded course, you got to help people stay engaged. So progress is one of your drivers, okay? So our brains on goals. Uh, you know, basically, progress, making progress is like achieving a goal. And it literally changes the structure of your brain so that your brain's optimized to achieve the goal. So thank you, neuroplasticity. This is kind of how we operate. We want to get to a goal, we feel ourselves making progress, so we want it even more. And basically, when we're emotionally attached to our goals, like when there's a sense of motivation, we evaluate obstacles as less challenging, which is important. So in our role, we always want people to be really motivated and trying to make change. That's, you know, that's why people hire us, because they want to do something. So we have to really understand that layer of getting people motivated. Achieving goals stimulates the production of dopamine for us, which makes us feel good. So it's not just the achievement of the goal, but it's even making progress toward the goal or feeling like we will achieve the goal that helps us make, um, that, that helps us have those good feelings. So we just wanna be paying attention to this. Progress is very important. One way to stimulate progress is to show progress by helping your participants map their journey. This is a really powerful practice, kind of can exist even behind the scenes to some degree, but let me just show you how this works. When Jonathan and Ray and I were planning this class, we didn't just think, hey, what do we want to teach? You know, we thought, wait a minute, what's the growth path? Where, where are people now? That's stage one. Where are people now? And we thought, well, you know what? We've got trainers with a varied amount of experience in live training. Some people have been doing it forever. Other people are new to this. Um, so that's where people are now. They've got a varied degree of experience in live training. What's the next milestone we want them to achieve? So we were thinking, well, we want, we want people to understand the technical aspects of engaging online experiences. That's where you are today, okay? The next stage is about how you design your content for transformation. 
So we just created this success pathway in a sense. So we thought, okay, we'll first understand the technical aspects, then we'll all get on the same page around designing content for transformation. Then we go to the next stage, which is beyond that, you've got to learn and understand how to build your, you know, your courses and market strategically. So we included that in this course. And finally, stage five is we want you to live into this great future where you build a more profitable online business. So that's ultimately kind of how we map the journey. Now, if we present this journey to you and we show you how you're making progress on this journey, and if that stage five, if that vision is something that you want, then you're much more likely to stay committed and connected to each step in the pathway. So this is kind of a big idea, but I always want you to be thinking not just about teaching the class that you're teaching now, but where you're taking people. And we're going to be talking about this a lot tomorrow. Where, what, what experience are you creating for people? Where are they headed with you? Okay. So if you can map that journey, that's a really important part. So imagine that this is just an introduction to this concept, but progress is engaging because it, it works with the way our brains work. And there's, we really have to understand that it's not just about using the technology. It's about understanding your learner. Okay. And as, as teachers, you all know that. There's other ways to promote progress. Gamification. Again, this is kind of big picture stuff. We're just trying to plant some seeds here today. But when I'm doing, especially an online class, I like to have a launch meeting. Like I have to, I want to welcome people and get people excited and generate energy. You can always include things like homework or you can use reports or you can have a leaderboard where people are competing for finishing things or completing different aspects of the course. You can use contests and prizes and competitions. You can have surprises and bonus content that gets unlocked as people go through the course. Um, you can give away badges and t-shirts, stickers, buttons, lanyards, all kinds of things. I'll show you some pictures here in a minute. You know, for example, okay, here's one. I took this class called the Ask Method, and they sent me this T-shirt out of nowhere. Kick Ask. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Um, I I have a uh, I have a bracelet for my Be an Amazing Trainer course, and so when you finish my Be an Amazing Trainer course, you get this leather bracelet that says B A A T, Be an Amazing Trainer. Um, I just finished another course about how to uh, design and deliver. Uh, membership sites and that was called tribe and again out of the blue they sent me this this little mask and, and a pin and a sticker so there's fun things to help people feel like they're connected so that it doesn't just become this thing that you send them like here watch this recording if you ever remember to do that <laughs> but rather that they feel engaged and as part of a community okay so games and prizes create that sense of community, of course, but there's more. Like, I want you to be thinking, how can you create a sense of community? And again, today we try to connect before content, get people to talk to each other. In some of my leadership courses, I have people fill out all these participant profiles. So they get to know each other differently through going through their participant profiles. We're going to do this. We're going to create pods. You're going to have a small group that you work with. You can do Q&A sessions where people just show up and get to talk more in small groups and more deeply. You can create an online community. We're going to invite you to one of those as well that we have for trainers. You can do lunch and learns. Uh, Rianne has something to say about that. Uh, mentoring opportunities. Sometimes you can bring people from, you know, one course and you can have them mentor new, new folks who are coming into the course later. And I love success stories. This is one of my primary sales tools where I try to follow the progress of people through that success journey. And then I tell the story by using a case study and I send that out and people love to see their success promoted. So there's so many ways, big picture ways to create community. Ray, do you want to say anything about those lunch and learns? Oh, we did a lot of lunch and learns when I worked at community uh, and and contract education at Ohlone College many years ago, they were very successful in a way of introducing our products to corporate uh, decision makers. So they were very successful. Today, we have to be careful with them because if people are not salaried workers and you are requiring them to attend something that is on their lunch hour, it could be a legal 
you know, pro problem. So yeah. I would say that it's a great marketing tool to give people a flavor or a taste of what you have to offer. And especially because 45 minutes, 50 minutes, it's a very doable, but you need to leave them with something again, memorable. What did I get out of this? All right. I learned how to do an automatic spreadsheet in Excel. I learned how to use a formula in bystander inter intervention. Give them one key uh, takeaway that they can practice and share and they walk away with the feeling like they have not only connected with other people, but they've walked away with a new skill or ability. So yeah. I think they're very helpful in our business in helping to, to distinguish ourselves from other type of training providers that we customize, that we offer value for a reasonable price with instructors who are very credible. I think that's one of the things we suffer yeah. sometimes with the community college is like, oh, these are college professors. They don't know the real world. The Lunch and Learns give us an opportunity to change that mentality. Nice. And Rand's going to go into more of that with, uh, in the marketing module as well. Just not, I mean, not necessarily just lunch and learns, but a lot of ways that you can position yourself and, um, and market a little bit better. Again, easily accessible stuff. Okay. So do be thinking about, because people show up for a lot of reasons. Now, not everybody is a community type of person. That's perfectly fine. But when you have a class of people, especially online, we want to create ways that people have the options of connecting. And you know, as well as I do, that when you feel connected to people, you want to perform for them. You want to perform in a different way. And that's what we want to stimulate a little bit with some of our sense of community. Uh, lunch and learns virtually now too are just something that uh, I've been doing like for a Q&A. So we just go bring your lunch and meet me at 12, you know, but be careful with that. Cause like Rayanne said, you have to make sure that it's optional for folks um, if they are not salaried for sure. Okay. <clears throat> so that kind of brings us to the end of that piece about all the tools of engagement. So I am just going to pause here for a minute and take a breath and see what kind of questions come up. We've got about three minutes or so just to ask some questions. And then I'm going to go over your capstone project and how that is going to work. But uh, let's just pause here for a sec. Anyone want to jump in? Do you have a burning, compelling question? You can always put it in chat or you can certainly unmute yourself for a moment if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment. Claire, do you put the captions um, to get those to show up? Is that in um, the settings, going back to the settings? This, okay, the captions that you're seeing right now, and you see that they're not 100% accurate. Right, that, that's. <laughs> as we go along. <laughs> but it's an important, it's very important for inclusivity, right? We right. want people to be able to read along as well. This particular set of captions is done by Google. So um, I created a Loom video for you. And maybe, Jonathan, maybe you can go ahead and put that in the chat if you wouldn't mind. Um, there is a, there's a link in the chat to a Loom video where I show you, it's just very simple. You create your slides in PowerPoint, you port them over to Google, you turn on, cap, you, know, you, you present, and then you turn on cap, closed captioning. And that's how it works. So cool. Okay. So cool. Thank you. Yes, and now Zoom is, of course, recording this whole screen. So that's nice. Okay? That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I want to say something about that, too, from the ADA. You know, I'm the HR hat over here. From an ADA perspective, that you cannot use the transcript. A lot of people say, oh, well, Zoom captures the transcript, and we'll just add that as a file and, and send that along. It is not considered ADA compliant to have a transcript. You have to have the captioning running while you're talking to make sure it's accessible to everyone. So just, this is something I think everyone needs to know how to do and make sure you do it if you are delivering any training online. We just want, you know, last word on engagement. Remember that real engagement happens when we include people. Inclusion is so important. You wanna meet all your ADA guidelines and make sure that your visuals and examples and stories are representative and inclusive for your audience, okay? It's just so important for us all to pay attention to that at all times and look for the ways that um, we just might be overlooking things that, you know, we got to keep everything in mind. So that's really, really important. And 
this is what we set out to do today. Tell us how we did. By the end of this session, we wanted you to know two ways to approach training online. So let me know. Can anybody jump in and tell me what were the two ways that we talked about uh, approaching training online? Anyone remember? Synchronous and asynchronous. Thank you. Yay, Marlene. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Some simple Zoom features. Whoops. Where'd I go? Simple Zoom features that will enhance engagement. Give me some shout outs. Give me three simple Zoom features that will enhance engagement. Somebody. Un un Breakout. 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 Video. Oh. Oh. And reactions. Very good. <laughs> Love it. Okay, how will you assess the quality of your training? Tell me about that. That simple evaluation form, where are you going to find that? You're going to send it to us. Thank you. That's right. I'm going to send it to you right afterwards. There's also a link over in uh, chat. Although, okay, so we, we learned that that is not opening for some folks. So you may have to sign out of your Google and sign back in but or something, but I will send it again. And give me some feedback on this. How do you succeed in this course and achieve certification? Will somebody answer that for me? Presentation. You do your presentation. Thank you. Very good. Although right. I'll say in the succeed part is if you just take a few things that you learned and you apply them, you will be successful. And if you can connect with a few people from this cohort along the way and you have that community, you'll be successful. Absolutely. Is there a way that we can connect with people? Are you sharing contact information? At the la I put in the chat earlier, at the last session, the lessons learned, um, we'll invite everyone who's in that stage to um, indicate if they want that, and then we'll, we can share out a list. Okay, great. Quick question on lighting. Is it better to have lighting overhead, behind, in front? Front, front lighting. Ambient front. lighting. And Ambi then some front lighting. Ambient and front, thank you. Yeah. And let me, mm -hmm. let me just chime in because I'm a woman of a certain age. There are some really good YouTube videos that tell you how to look better online. So <laughs> I've got a little concealer. Anyway, you got to, you know. So anyway, there's some really good videos online to, with, that talk about light, lighting. Thank you. Can I just add one thing about women of certain ages? My mother <laughs> always told me, make sure you wear lipstick. So. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Can't have enough of that. <laughs> right. I have a quick question, and that is, will the uh, chat uh, be available as a file for us? Oh, that's great. Uh, yes, we the chat playing. is included. I'm sorry, go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I would just say, too, like, you're able to go in right now, and, and you could do a select all and copy into a Word document if you wanted to. I don't think we were specifically planning to send out the whole chat. There's some range of different messages. I don't know if everyone wants their questions um, sent publicly, but if you want to go ahead in and select all and copy before we close out today, Thanks. that's that would be my recommendation. Thanks, Jonathan. Very good. Okay. Yes, Carol. Got to unmute. <laughs> unmute. I have a question about using multiple screens or you said you, you, you're using two computer screens. Yes. Um, because for, for teaching and having one-on-one, -on -one, I need one screen and then I need another screen for my own presentation, that kind of thing, so that I can go back and forth. How does that work? Well, you have to set it up. Um, I got my, I got a second monitor down at the, um, there's a place here in my town called Gray Bears Recycling and they said, they, you know, they'll sell these monitors for, I mean, I think I got it for like $15 or something. Um, and then I just needed a cable and that wasn't very expensive. And um, so having the two screens, I mean, for me, I'm on a Mac. I don't know what you use, but I'm on a Mac and I just plugged it in and it, boom. And then I, I went into um, my settings and I, I chose the dual screen and then now I can move things back and forth from the screen. So I could put the chat and the breakout rooms and everything on my auxiliary screen and have my slide deck and, and my picture frames, my gallery view on my primary screen. Well, what's been your experience with using iPhone and computer? An, an iPhone or an, or an Apple? An iPhone and computer. I mean, can, 
I have not connected the iPhone and the computer. I have not done that. I hate using my phone. I, I'm also a woman of a certain age and that little thing is just too small for me. <laughs> it's just too small. <laughs> I can't do it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So Claire, um, if you could go ahead to the next um, slide. Yeah. Oops. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Just want to... Um, be able to show that before. And again, to everyone, um, so these links were sent out previously. Um, keep an eye on your email, your junk folder, in case it goes in there. But Claire will be sending out a follow-up today. And um, we, um, we also wanted to um, share a quick video. And the caveat is, um, again, you just don't know how it will play. So this is a good experiment. And actually, I put it in there as an experiment. You'll see on the next slide, it's otherwise blank. And I put below that, um, that link that we're going to play in a moment some of the directions that um, Zoom gives on doing this. So again, when you click share screen, and I think Claire did this this morning when we were, she was setting up initially, she clicked those optimize buttons. So let's test it out together in the last minute. This is a short video you may um, have seen online, very powerful. So Claire, why don't you go ahead and try to play that. We're never alone. And that is our strength. Because when we're doubted, we'll play as one. When we're held back, we'll go farther and harder. If we're not taken seriously, prove that wrong. And if we don't fit the sport, we'll change the sport. We know things won't always go our way. And the world's sporting events are postponed or cancelled. But whatever it is, we'll find a way. And when things aren't fair, we'll come together for change. We have a responsibility to make this world a better place. And no matter how bad it gets, we will always come back stronger. Because nothing can stop what we can do together. Wow, love that. Yeah, it's such a powerful video. We actually, um, one of our trainers used it in a training we delivered this weekend at the very end. I think we all need to be reminded of that. Now, what you'll notice um, is, now just for the sake of this experiment to kind of show you, there's different things you can do. You can do full screen, so you wouldn't see the other things around the edge. We weren't worried about that, because we wanted to just show you what this experience is like from a video and audio perspective. So let's hear from you real quick. How well did you hear that? If you want to put in the chat if you heard it well or if you had some issues. Um, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of positive responses. So it looks like in this case, clicking those buttons at the bottom really worked. Um, and I won't be surprised if for one or two people it, it still wasn't um, a great audio experience because that could depend on your own uh, connectivity. I just want to share too that when Claire stopped sharing her screen that we were able to see more people, uh, the, whole, the, the whole group and another way to make that community connection is thinking about when you could stop sharing here and there rather than leaving the PowerPoint up the whole time. So really thinking about timing when you're doing your longer presentations. Okay, friends, thank you so much for being here as we as we leave us for today, remember tomorrow morning, 8.30, and, um, the Zoom, and the same Zoom link, but we'll send that out again as well. And uh, if you get a chance, we want you to download the workbook, the Be an Amazing Trainer workbook, and go up to, you know, get it started. I think, you, I think I've asked you to go to, what, page 12 or 14? I'll make sure that's back in the, um, in the uh, email as well. 
but please do leave us a little comment over in chat. Tell me one thing that you are feeling right now, one word, and just to enhance all of our emotional intelligence, something different than good, fine, or okay would be invited. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, good. Suzanne's feeling energized. Thank you. That's a great way to start. Inspired. Very good. Excited. I love it. Motivated. Thank you so much. Ready and excited. Appreciative. We're very appreciative of you as well. Yeah. Thank you for being here and thank you for all your awesome contributions. We can't wait to get to know you better and to see you in action. So you can look for my email. Don't forget to check your junk mail folder if you're not seeing it from me. And, um, and you also, just by the way, I'm going to say out loud my email right now, claire.laughlin at comcast.net. Very easy to remember. If you don't hear from me, please send me an email. Thank you, Jonathan. He just put it in the chat. So you can go grab it there. claire.laughlin at comcast.net and really looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Make it a great day, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.